Okay, I'd like to welcome you to our program this afternoon. I'm Jacob Hornberger, president of the Future of Freedom Foundation. It's great to be here. Uh, these are sort of my old stomping grounds. I spent three years here in Austin going to school, and uh, I think it was the best three years of my life. And as I told somebody on the plane up here, I said, man, there is not any greater city in the United States than Austin, Texas. So, yeah. <laughs> So it's nice to be back, sort of home. And, uh, you know, there's fewer greater violations of the principles of liberty than the war on drugs. Yeah. I mean, imagine, you know, putting somebody into jail for oftentimes a large portion of their lives for doing nothing more than ingesting a substance that some other people disapprove of. I mean, it really is a mind-boggling thing that they do to people. And we all know what a failure the war on drugs has been. I mean, even the proponents of the war on drugs will admit it's been a failure. Uh, that's why they want to keep it going after several decades. And if it was just a failure, that would be one thing. But we all know that it's much worse than a failure. When we look at the consequences of the war on drugs, they're just horrific. You've got... Um, You've got massive death taking t in place. Uh, s some 60 or 70,000 dead people in Mexico alone in the last six or seven years. It's incredible. And not because of drugs, but because of the drug war. You've got drug gangs and drug cartels that never would exist except for the, the drug war. You've got muggings and robberies and thefts and burglaries where addicts are are getting the money to pay for the exorbitant black market prices of drugs. You got massive infringements on civil liberties, warrantless searches, raids on homes where they shoot people and people's pets. And uh, it, it, you've got police corruption, bribery of, of cops and, and bribery of judges. You've got highway robbery where the, where the cops stop people on the highways and steal their money, especially poor people. Just take their money and then say, if you don't like it, sue us. And of course, they don't have any money left because the money to hire a lawyer because the cops are sitting with the money with no due process at all. But, you know, as, as bad as the war on drugs has been, it, in terms of, of government power, it, it really pales uh, in comparison to the war on terrorism. I mean, did you ever think that you would live in a country when you were growing up as a kid? Uh, a country in which the government has the omnipotent legal authority approved by the courts to assassinate any single American? No due process of law, no going through the judicial system, no warrants, no, just the power to assassinate any one of you or any other American. Now, we know they have the power to do that to people overseas. They do it to people on a daily basis. But the power to assassinate your own citizens, that's a power that's inherent to totalitarian regimes, not free societies. And of course, there's the power to round up Americans legally, put them into military dungeons, concentration camps, torture them. It's an incredible system. You've got invasions, occupations, uh, partnerships with dictatorial regimes, support of dictatorships ever-increasing anger and hatred toward the American people and, and, and to, the, to the principles on which this country was founded, the principles enunciating the Declaration of Independence. I mean, this whole system has sullied our image among people of the world. I mean, people used to look at America and just, they would hold America in high esteem. They would extol our values and our principles. I mean, I once traveled to Cuba, and, and this kid comes up to me and he says, my biggest dream in life it's to just go see the Statue of Liberty because America stands for everything I believe in. That's what this system has done. It's a bad system. And so the, the, the question, of course, is, is what can we do about that? And which raises another question is, why are you here? And, and I suspect that you're here be, for the same reason that we're here putting on this program. You care. We all care about what's happening to this country. We know something's wrong. 
We just got to figure out what it is, and we got to figure out how to put it on the right track. And that's the purpose of this conference. You're in store, I think you'll find, for a very, very enjoyable program here. You're about to see three of the greatest speakers for liberty and civil liberties and privacy and, and opponents of imperialism and interventionism that you, than you will ever see in your life. Radley Balco, Glenn Greenwald, Ron Paul. Three of my heroes in life. You're here because you want to move this country in a better direction. And that's what this conference is for. And that's why the theme of this conference is end, not reform, the wars on drugs and terrorism. Now, I want to point out that, that we're doing this in partnership with the Young Americans for Liberty, which is one of the greatest pro-freedom organizations in this country. And we are very, very pleased and really, really proud to be working with YAL on this program. We've worked with them on other programs. And uh, when we got together to do this together, we, we, this, this has been one of our most exciting programs. And I, I want to thank them for the great work they've done to put this thing together. And so it's, 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 it's a big honor for us to be partnering with YAL in this presentation, in this conference. With that, would you please welcome the president of the Young Americans for Liberty, Jeff Frazee. Jeff. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the campaign boot camp this morning went great. Thanks to the convention attendees for joining us that, for that. Thank you very much, uh, Future Freedom Foundation, for coming up with this wonderful idea and approaching us to help co-sponsor and host the event. Um, and, and we're so very fortunate to have you here. Uh, we're expecting a big day. This is going to be exciting. I just had lunch with Dr. Paul. Uh, he's looking forward to this. I know Glenn Greenwald and Radley Balco are in the building as well. I'm looking forward to it as well. Uh, but I want to give you some context about our, our organization, Young Americans for Liberty. If you're here for the first time, you're not familiar with YAL, uh, maybe this is an opportunity to get involved, to get engaged, to take the ideas that you learned today and actually put them into action. So I want to give you our brief background on our mission. Uh, Young Americans for Liberty was formed in um, December of 2008 as a continuation of Students for Ron Paul Network. Uh, my name is Jeff Frazee. I'm the founder and executive director. Uh, I was Ron Paul's national youth coordinator in 2008. And as a result of that student effort, I looked in the mirror and said, there's no way this revolution can die. We have got to continue the momentum. And um, by the grace of God, formed YAL, and uh, we've been launched and, and active ever since. Uh, real quickly, our overview and our background, our mission for YAL is to identify, educate, train, and mobilize youth activists committed to winning on principle. Now, the key phrase in our mission is winning on principle. We want to take the principles of liberty and learn how to win with them in the political process. A novel idea, both for the liberty movement and for politics at large. So our goal is to cast the leaders of tomorrow so we can reclaim the policies, candidates, and direction of our government. We are actually two different organizations. I'm going to get into the weeds real quickly. We have a 501c3 and a 501c4. So if there's any donors in the audience who want to support the organization, uh, 501c3 is a tax-deductible uh, donation. We uh, do most of our activities, all of our educational activities, a lot of our training is based in our 501c3. But we have a 501c4 that allows us to have a little bit more teeth in the political process and actually endorse and oppose active legislation. Our first step of our mission is to identify young leaders on campuses across the country. I know we have active chapters in over 30 campuses here in Texas alone. Uh, those young leaders are the backbone of the organization. Right now we have, although it says 580, we just crossed the barrier of 600 active chapters across the country on college campuses. We have active chapters in all 50 states. Uh, the movement has grown far beyond my wildest dreams. I remember when we formed the organization and my idea of I had a big lofty goal of if we can get 250 campus chapters nationwide, we will be a legitimate national organization. And it has grown by leaps and bounds, over 600 now, and it has not slowed down. I keep waiting for that time for our movement to, for the plateau. It has not happened. 
Uh, our membership, our, our, our sign-ups are over 200,000. We're approaching over 250,000. Uh, I'm sorry, we're over 250,000. We're approaching nearly 300,000 at this point. Uh, the organic activity that's happening in the grassroots is, is impressive, and we are glad just to be a vehicle to allow uh, you to be able to engage in the political process. So we identify our young leaders, we organize into chapters, that's our backbone of the organization. Uh, our next step is to educate. So we look to educate uh, students, young people, in the philosophy of liberty. And how we do that, we re recruit on campus, we tirelessly recruit. We're not just a small debate society that just meets and has a book club. We're active on campuses, we are reaching out to students, trying to start that dialogue and have that debate introduce them to the ideas of liberty, and hopefully expose them to this message so uh, they, like us, can uh, feel that they have a, a political home. We do this through our campus activism nationwide. We have three goals with all of our activism projects. We try to recruit, we try to educate, we try to earn media. And it's all around, based around the idea of outreach. So we do that with various activism projects and speakers all across the country. Uh, the topics that we touch on range from the Constitution, to uh, free markets, to civil liberties, uh, to, to uh, national security uh, and privacy issues. Uh, so those are educational efforts we do on ca college campuses. So once you're identified, you're engaged, you're educated about the philosophy of liberty, I get it, Jeff, I want to be involved, what do I do next? And that's where we hold these events like we are today, is we train you in the philosophy of liberty and train you to be effective in the political process. So our purpose is to transform young leaders into skilled, effective activists to develop a farm team of constitutional leaders. So we try to find people who are interested in the ideas, who understand the ideas, and then want to make a difference uh, in their country to, to change the political dialogue closer to the ideas of liberty. So this is where we try to train you to be effective. Our YAL state conventions today being one of them here in Texas, this will be our, one of our largest we have nationwide. Uh, we've held, we held 12 of them across the country. Uh, we expect uh, uh, to train over 3,000 young people uh, throughout the course of this year. Last year we had over 3,100 trained. Um, sorry, the last two years, 3,100 trained. We're hoping to do that alone in this year, in this year alone. So we've identified a network, we've built a national grassroots movement, we've educated you hopefully in the philosophy of liberty so you're on board. Uh, we train you to be effective in the political process. Uh, you're ready to go. So the next step of our mission is to mobilize. And that's where we have our campaign boot camps. That's where we do a lot of our C4 work. We also have an affiliated PAC that helps endorse candidates. We try to find pro-liberty elections candidates that we can get behind and trained a grassroots army to go out and volunteer to knock on doors, to make phone calls, to be campaign managers, to be a field staff. Um, but it evolves beyond just the political process and just um, in politics. Real quick though, before I jump ahead, uh, one effort specifically in Kentucky, you may be familiar with a senator who's now running for president uh, from Kentucky. In 2010, we mobilized over 170 volunteers to Kentucky to train them how to be effective in a campaign and then allowed them to go volunteer for the candidate of their choice. Turns out they all jumped on Ryan Paul's bus, uh, but they all went and volunteered for Senator Paul, and we tracked polling leading from the day we arrived to election day, and we actually saw the needle move with the efforts that our activists and volunteers did for Senator Paul, from a seven point boost in the primary to a nine point boost in the general election. And so this is one case study. We've been doing this across the country in congressional campaigns, state races, we're trying to find more pro-liberty activists who fit in the mold of Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Justin Amash, Thomas Massey, people who will take a constitutional principled stand and who will not give in to the pressures of Washington, D.C. and Republican and Democratic leadership. So over the past year, uh, we placed over 586 total placements across the movement. As I said, we don't just do elections. If you're like, eh, elections are not for me, I'm a policy person, or I'm interested in academia, or I want to be a business leader, we have a place for you too. We try to present all opportunities across the spectrum to find you a place that you can be most effective in the liberty movement. So whether it's an internship in Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill, whether it's in a think tank, whether it's in a state-based think tank, whether it's a lobby initiative here, here uh, to lobby your city council. We want to train you to be effective so you can exceed uh, in the realm that you want to accomplish. As I mentioned, we have an affiliated PAC, our LibertyAction.com PAC, uh, where we try to endorse principled and viable candidates. 
And we weigh, that, we weigh those out equally. We want you to be principled in the ideas, and I say that holistically, but also viable and have a chance to win. Now, our PAC is not a multi-million dollar super PAC that can come in and do everything for you. Uh, our hope is to be able to help on the margins. So if your candidacy is viable and you have a chance to win and you support our ideas, reach out to us because we'd love to be able to talk with you and potentially endorse your candidacy uh, for, for, for office. Now, our PAC mostly fo focuses on a federal level. Um, if, if there's a viable candidate in a state level race or local race, we'll talk to you individually and see what we can do. But at the very least, if our PAC can't endorse you, I know we have a whole network of activists who are looking to get involved so you can find volunteers and campaign staff. Um, so that, that's the overview of our mission and what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, if you have any quick questions, I think I can see people a little bit, a little bright up here, but I think I can see if you have any quick questions, I have a little bit of time, I'm happy to uh, take a question or two. Don't be shy, just raise your hand. Or if I covered it all, that works too. Yes, question. Uh, Speak loud because we don't have another microphone for you, unfortunately. So where did uh, the American Civil Liberties Union start? Like, how did it's a great question. So our founding uh, was a continuation of the Students for Ron Paul effort in 2008. So we already had a network of campus chapters built in. Um, I don't know if we actually started on one specific chapter. Now, I know there are people who claim that they were the first person that started the YL chapter. Uh, but I think it transitioned to about 75 chapters to begin with. I don't know all 75 off the top of my head, but um, we have since grown to over 600. So there's not one campus, I would say, that we started on, but uh, it was a continuation of that effort. Is your director here in Austin, Texas, and how can people get involved here? Great, great question. So we have a few state chairs. Uh, Dalton, Lane, are you here? Where's Dalton? So stand up real fast. This is... He's one of our state chairs. You need to make sure you connect with Dalton. Um, Nick, is Nick here? Nick is the chapter president here at Texas University. I'm an Aggie, so I can't refer to it to. Um, so did that answer your question? Yes. So uh, worst case scenario, contact us. Just email jeff at yliberty.org. Any email address we'll, we'll get and we're happy to connect you with the people here on the ground. Also, if you go to our website, we've built our website to be decentralized in the fact that you can go to any one of the individual chapters and message the leadership of that chapter directly through our website. So if you live anywhere in Texas and, hey, I want to find out where there's a YL chapter locally, go to our website, click on the chapters page, find the chapter that's in your area, and you can connect with them directly. Um, so any, we try to be as open uh, with our communications as possible, so if you want to get involved, if you want to get connected locally, all you need to do is reach out to us, and we'll make sure to put you in touch with the right people. How well are you able to connect with minorities? Great question. Well, the audience here today, I think, is a pretty good makeup of the diversity. Um, I think the message transcends all individuals. We don't look at specific voting blocks or specific demographics and say, we, we're going to target this gender or this race. We try to present the message of liberty holistically and at an individual level and attract all individuals to our cause. So we've never had a specific minority outreach um, per se. We, we've tried to just present the message as it is and attract all people from all walks of life. A couple more questions and I need to get out of here. Go ahead, sir. What type of uh, response do you get from the faculty? Haha, <laughs> great question. What kind of response do we get from the faculty? Yes. Uh, the Communist Party of America. Um, <laughs> It's, it can be hit or miss. Um, we have had some contentious debates, I could say, with faculty. Uh, I will say it's changing, though. I think there are a lot more pro-liberty faculty that are starting to seep into the system and um, finding to get tenure before they actually come out and say, I'm a libertarian or a conservative. Um, so we've done a really, there's a few partner organizations that we work with that do a phenomenal job at networking professors and faculty, and we try to merge that network with our network, so we try to connect our chapters with faculty advisors to sustain the, sustain the chapter long term and also provide them that guidance. Uh, but in terms of one-on-one, -on -one, it can be very hit or miss. There's been um, instances where we've been yelled out of rooms or attempted to be yelled out of a room, uh, and there's also... Uh, even leftist professors who have welcomed us because it's, part, it's a, a fresh angle in the, into the debate. It's no longer just right versus left. We provide a fresh message that's not being discussed in the classroom. So on the whole, I would say we've been welcomed uh, on the academic sphere, but there have been instances where we've had to uh, butt heads with uh, certain philosophies on campuses.
right here in the blue. Uh, great. That, that's becoming a question more and more, is do we have some sort of alumni network? Um, I'm careful not to reveal too much, but we're working on an alumni program that is going to, uh, I guess, the next phase of YAL. Uh, from, we're focused mostly on the campus level right now, but we've had some of our top leaders who have since graduated and become young professionals. We are working on that young professional network. My hope is that we launch it this summer. Uh, we are looking for ideas, so here's one of our struggles. What benefits do young professionals want? What are you looking for as a young professional that we can provide to you as a resource that you would find of, of great benefit? That's kind of the, the, the exercise we're working through right now. So a lot of the questions, a lot of the responses are being able to meet people of the opposite sex. That seems to be a frequent response. So there's a lot of networking involved, uh, career development uh, we're looking to, to do, and just stay engaged and be able to, be able to find like-minded people can sometimes be difficult once you leave a college campus. So we are working on that program. I'm hoping this summer we'll have announcements. And I think it's going to be much bigger than even YAL. I hope so. Uh, the trajectory we've been on has been phenomenal, much bigger than I ever thought or dreamed. Uh, we haven't had any slowdown. Uh, I think there will be a lot of our activists who will go on to support different candidates who are running in the election, presidential all the way down. So usually these active presidential elections, the organization, uh, the tide kind of goes out. They take off their YAL hat and put on their candidate hat. Uh, but I think as a result of that, that growth will come back, the tide will come back in, and the growth will come back to YAL. Uh, it's happened in the past two presidential election cycles where we've, the activity on the YAL front was a little dampered because everyone was active in the presidential elections, and when the presidential elections ended, we actually had more people come into YAL from the recruitment efforts from those. So we see ourselves as the institution. We want to maintain this long-term fight. Uh, there will be individuals who come along and fight the shorter-term battles in elections, and we want to make sure we have young people who are ready, engaged, and trained uh, to be able to jump on, onto those efforts. So look at my time. I think I have two minutes, so maybe one or two more questions. Right here. Good question. Uh, I think it's the same question we had up front, so maybe you didn't hear it. Uh, re outreach to minority communities. As I said, we present the message holistically to all communities and all backgrounds, and we welcome all people. So we have not targeted a specific program to minorities or any specific racial or gender group. Um, I think the message of liberty resonates with all backgrounds, and I think that's important to, to bring all backgrounds together, so that's been our focus. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the time. Thank you for coming. Uh, we hope you enjoy the day, and please get involved and get engaged. <laughs>